this shows us the status of the Arabs. How about the status outside of Arabia? We already mentioned that the Roman Empire was upon Christianity, and the, uh, the, the Sassanid Empire, or the Persian Empire, was upon Zoroastrianism. And Zoroastrians, of course, they have the concept of the god of fire and the god of, of uh, 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 darkness, Ahura Mazda and Ahriman. So they have a perpetual fire that is lit, and they worship that. So the Zoroastrians are from the Islamic perspective, a type of uh, idolatry, a type of paganism. How about the Christianity of Rome? Well, again, to make a long story short, this is a whole interesting thing in and of itself. After Allah Azza wa raised the Prophet Isa alayhi salam, we can say that there were, within 30, 40 years, there were three major strands of Christianity. Three major understandings of Christianity. The first type, is called Gnosticism, which we're not going to talk about. It's a completely uh, philosoph- uh, ph- philosophized understanding. Gnosticism. It's a very mystical understanding. And they pretty much eliminated it. There's really no Gnostic Christians anymore. The two major groups of Christians, the first of them are called Jewish Christians. This is the name that academics give. Jewish Christians. And the second, some people call them Pauline Christians, following, following Paul. right? So there were Jewish Christians and there were Pauline Christians. Jewish Christians, they believed, amongst other things, that they are Jews. That they have to follow the law of Musa. That they have a sharia, kosher and kashrut and all of these laws. That they have to be circumcised and eat the biha or, or kosher meat and basically be practicing Jews. And that Jesus Christ was sent to the Jews. And that he was the promised Messiah. I.e. this is exactly what we believe. It's exactly what we believe. Right? Now, Paul, who was never an actual disciple, he claimed to be a disciple. He claimed to see Jesus Christ uh, in his vision. Paul was the one who began a whole new theology. What is this theology? Jesus Christ has elements of divinity. He's not just a man. He's a super Man, some type of divinity. Jesus Christ came to destroy the law or to obliterate the law. Or not destroy, it's not a good word. They wouldn't agree with that. Jesus Christ came to make the law unfunctional. He says, he came to replace the law. If you believe in Jesus Christ, there is no sharia. And there, the, the, the whole question of, of circumcision is discussed in the New Testament. So he said, you don't have to circumcise. You don't have to do the sharia anymore. And then he began some elements of the Trinity. He began this and that. So this is called Pauline Christianity. For 300 years, Christians debated over what is the meaning of Christianity. What is Jesus Christ? Is he a prophet? Is he a God? Is he a son of God? What are the Bible? What is this and that? Until finally, and the Romans... Initially, you know, the Romans were a pagan religion, right? They had the god Jupiter, and they had this. The Romans were the worst enemies of the Christians. And there are these stories that they would find Christians and throw them to the lion pits, and they would, you know, uh, the, the emperor Nero burnt Christians alive. He, 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 he made the whole city of Rome burning a light by Christian bodies. He would light a Christian for the light bulb of the city. So he was, they were, these were evil people, and Christians were martyrs, and they were persecuted. So for two, three hundred years, Christians were martyrs, until a miracle happened. There were probably about 3-4% Christians in the Roman Empire until a miracle happened from their perspective, and that is the emperor converted to Christianity. Now, the equivalent would be in our times if the president of the United States converted to Islam, because we are around 5-6%, and Christians were around 5 Well, some say he's already a Muslim, but we're not getting into that theory, okay? Mr. Hussein Sahab, we're not going to talk about him. But the equivalent would literally be, you're a minority religion, you're a 5% religion, and then the emperor converts to your religion. This is what happened with Christianity, right? Constantine was the first convert of the Roman Empire to Christianity, the first emperor, sorry, to convert to Christianity. Now, Constantine isn't just some Joe on the street, he's the emperor. So he's not going to have these bickerings going on, so he convenes a whole council. All you Christians were fighting, come, let's, let's, have a, let's have a dialogue. And let's figure out what Christianity is. And then he wanted a certain version of Christianity. We're just zooming this quickly through because he's a pagan from before. So he wants a little bit of a paganistic uh, element of Christianity. And so from that, we get the 25th of December. We get the concept of halos. We get the concept of, of a trinity. We get this. We get the son of God because they had a son of God in Mithraeus. All of this is, you know, we, all of this comes from, from Constantine's uh, uh, decision in 325 in the city of Nicaea, which is now in Turkey. He held a council called the Council of Nicaea. In 325 CE, Constantine decrees official Christianity is basically Pauline Christianity. All other Christians, we're going to do to you what our ancestors did to the other Christians. We're going to burn you, persecute you, kill you. So there was a massive outflux, an immigration, a hijrah of original Christians to other lands. right? And this is why it is said that some of them came to the Najashi's kingdom. And so the Najashi's kingdom had more Jewish Christians than others. Others went to Iran. And so Salman and Farsi, so we're going to come to is there. But the Roman Empire officially banished Jewish Christianity. And there was no such thing as Jewish Christianity officially in the Roman Empire. So Pauline Christianity then became the standard from Pauline. We got the Orthodox, the Catholic, the Protestant, and that's basically 99.9% of Christians. The original others are all completely gone. Now, this isn't 325. The process was born 570, 250 years before. So we have remnants, little bit of references that some of the original Christianity was saved. And the most interesting story we have is that of Salman al-Farsi. Salman al-Farsi. His story is a very long story. It's narrated in Muslim Imam Ahmed that it is authentic. We'll summarize it. And I want all of you to read his story in the books of Sirah in more detail.